Good evening and um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 160. Um, each week we join at this time to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google+. Um, with us tonight uh, we have uh, Chase Rayner from uh, uh, Santa Barbara in the USA. Um, Chase is uh, an SEO. You can find him at reliablecomputerhealth.com. David Razam uh, is an SEO from the UK. Um, he uh, is an SEO copywriter of um, uh, 30 years standing, 10 of those as an SEO copywriter. Would that be right? For a copywriter of 30 years standing. <laughs> yes, I've been copywriting for 30 years. I've been doing the uh, the SEO stuff and content strategy and stuff for about 12 years now. Okay. You don't look that old, David. I'm oh, sorry? Uh, you can find David at writingforseo.org. Um, Masataki Wata um, pretends he's not an SEO, but he really is. Um, <laughs> And uh, he's uh, webmaster of whatsaweb.net and uh, also uh, uh, a Google Top contributor on the AdSense and also the Google Plus help community. Tim Kappa is uh, also a top contributor on the Google My Business community. And uh, Tim uh, is an SEO and a conversion rate optimization specialist um, all also from the UK, so was Masataki. Um, and uh, uh, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. Our first, um, oh, hang on, I forgot to click the right button. There we go. Um, our first question tonight uh, is from Saurabh, Saurabh Rawat. Uh, and Sarab asked a question about navigation with no follow. He said, I have the main sites links in my, my co-sites navigation with no follow. Um, is there any problem? So just to clarify, there is so he has his main site, and then there are navigation links on that main site to his co-sites. So I assume that you know, there's a different site from his main site. Would that be correct? Do you think that that would be a fair assumption to make? That's the assumption I'm making. I'm, I'm thinking of a, a menu bar um, with... Um, Navigation links in it, and at the bottom you'll probably have links to, to pages on the main site. Uh, oh. Right. So let's answer this both ways in case we've misinterpreted it. If you mean your navigation links in your main site and you meaning the navigation links in your normal site which are internal navigation links those should not be no followed if you have in the footer for example um, links to another site um, yeah I mean in, in there's two two thoughts there in terms of, of no following them if the two businesses are Google can identify that they they belong to the same sort of parent company um, and that there's no sort of attempt at manipulation in, in, in that way. They both belong to the same company. You're not sort of like creating, you know, over-optimized um, 
uh, link text, then you know, for me personally, um, I, I wouldn't worry about no following those. If, on the other hand, it's to I don't know your 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 main site sells pink fluffy elephants, and your second site sells cars, totally unrelated, but you may own both of them, but they are unrelated, and all of a sudden, <laughs> at the bottom of the site on the pink fluffy elephants, you say super cheap cars, and you link through to the other side, well, in that case, I would no follow that, because the, you know, you're going to look at, you, you, you're going to anticipate problems uh, arising when when Google comes across this and at some point questions the validity of that. Um, so it all depends on the relationship if there are two separate sites, the relationship between the two and of course how you're actually linking to it. Um, if you're just saying you know the name of the, of, of the site, the company or whatever the case may be uh, and linking to it and it's quite clearly there's a relationship between the two. Personally, I wouldn't worry about no following those. Um, but if they, it may be construed differently um, from Google's point of view, then it would be safer to no follow. But in terms of internal navigation on one single site, no, you shouldn't be no following that. Cool. I think we can call that a wrap. Did anyone want to add anything to Tim's excellent answer? I thought not. Okay. Um, Saurabh, um, I hope you're happy with that. What's going on here? Here's a question from uh, Emmy Anderson on uh, removing links, spam pages. Um, Emmy has uh, a website, uh, flyopedia.com. Uh, there are a lot of linked spam pages. Uh, please let me know how to remove those pages from w the website and Google search results. Um, more info can be found at, and, and she gives a link there. I, I haven't looked at that link. I'll look now. Okay, so it's a site query um, um, on um, fly, uh, site operator query for flyopedia.com. Contains a lot of um, a lot of um, um, Chinese. It looks like Ch Chinese uh, translated email uh, uh, URLs. I think she just has to disavow them, right? Well, I, that's that's one one option. Yeah, seems sensible to me. Although, um, what, I'm what, what, what would you be disavowing? Disavowing the link. <laughs> Yeah, but is that not um, what's happening? I thought or am we looking between what's going on? No, it's on uh, the site. On. Thought, isn't it? Is her site not Flyopedia? No, I think it is. So, so I was expecting lots of information about flies on it. So I was very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to be disavowing these because it's your own freaking domain. Yeah. Okay. okay. But surely uh, she doesn't have spam pages on her site. She must have oh, links. Oh. Spam pages. I, I need to tell you that, that, that uh, it, it is not the case. She says a lot of linked spam pages. 
Um, she's probably removed the spam pages, but they've, 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 as is usual with hackers, uh, once they um, put um, spam pages on, on um, the victim's site, they usually link to it so that it can perform better than uh, otherwise. Oh, I see. Okay. She's not. She's yeah. not talking about. She's not talking about all the different links she has on here with nothing in them. These are user generated. Hang on a second. Get rid of that. Oh, it's a crazy oh, so these, these are all on the site. Ah. I mean, maybe she has to get rid of them each individually and just do it that way. Well, they retain 404, so eventually they should drop out, right? Or are they 404s? Yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all 404s. The one, this one I'm at is a 301 here. Um. Oh, it's a 301 and a 404. Okay, yeah, so they'll they'll just drop off. She doesn't have to do anything. The question's why they were uh, generated in the first place. I suppose that's the <laughs> pressing yeah. issue. Um, oh. Oh. Well, the thing is that um, this is a um, um, a travel site, uh, like a, a site uh, selling flights. Um, it's nothing to do with retail, but a whole lot of retail pages have ended up um, being crawled by Googlebot. So I think it's reasonable to assume that uh, the site has been hacked. Mm. <laughs> um, well, anyone can... Yeah. Um, hold on a second. But you can, you can create this kind of thing anyway um, in the sense that on any site anywhere in the world, I could take flightopedia.com forward slash pick my own whatever the hell, <laughs> um, blah, 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 and, you know, if you chuck it into SenuX and just generate 50 million spam links onto all different places with your user-generated crap query, if your site, which I'm assuming it had done, uh, did have or did allow parameter query uh, strings and created pages on that, then you would have these things appearing. They've obviously dealt with that now, and that's why these are going to 404s. So, you know, anybody can do this if you haven't set up your parameter query um, things. But I'm. Uh, I wonder. Let's just see if we can find any of these pages if it was actually a hack originally. Or, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me go back. I mean, they, they could have just gotten rid of those products and deleted the pages, and now they still have their uh, search results, and she's wondering why they're still showing up. I'm wondering if... Uh, no, I think... Yeah. Oh, let's see if we can...
what's going on here? Although it is a little odd that Flyopedia would be selling backpacks. <laughs> yeah, they're selling all sorts of... Um, well, firstly, obviously, if those appearing in your search console, you can just ask them to be removed straight out of uh, index. First off... I think Neviana Karakasheva um, gave a great answer on um, there. It's on the screen at the moment. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, so you can drop those straight out, straight away. They've obviously identified them because they're going to four over fours now. Um, Um, yeah, I mean, she, for uh, Neviana, says that, for example, there's one page that she's actually, yeah, so you want to do a links, links audit. Um, you can obviously go into, same again, your search console. If you don't have any um, tools, uh, SEO tools, you go to search console and check your links to site. Check each and every one. Um, particularly, obviously, you can check particular pages. So there's um, check particular pages that look bizarre, uh, and the links pointing to you. So, for example, from this kxle.com.cn secret blah blah, just disavow the entire domain. You, those you can disavow um, for sure. And then uh, Neviana also identified the other one, mseb. Dot pro, disavow that straight away. Um, so you can get rid of those other ones in your search console by asking them to be uh, removed, uh, de-indexed. Uh, at the same time, check all your links, uh, and then you might need to probably download them all. It'll be easier to see then. Download them all into a spreadsheet, and then you'll be able to notice a dodgy-looking link straight off, manually give it a quick check, go to the page and have it a quick check. If it's creating any of these crappy, um, you know, injected links, well, tough luck to that domain, just disavow the domain. Um, yeah, that should be a... Uh, yeah, I, I think it is, as long as... Um the server keeps returning 404 errors. Google doesn't drop these um, pages from the index straight away, um, but they're more than likely um, not ranking as well as they were before. Um, but uh, that, that, by doing a site query, that they'll show what Google physically has in its index. Um, and it's just going, they're just going to be there for a little while and, until Google drops them. I, I, I see later in, the, in that comment, uh, she did say that she has disavowed th those two domains. Um, so I, I'd say that she's done all that uh, she can. It's just a matter of waiting for that to get tidied up. Cool. And we thank uh, Neviana Karakasheva uh, for her great um, set of answers and um, also um, uh, all of our other forum heroes that help us out through the week. All right, we're time to move on to the next. 
I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Nikos Christou asks a question about meta keywords no longer work. He said, "Hi. Quick question. I know that meta keywords no longer work for Google, and having them provides no SEO benefit. However, does it actually count towards spam if you have them in? In which case, uh, you get less rankings uh, because you still have them uh, at play." Um, I'll I'll give you kind of Google's answer to this. They reserve the right to use the meta keywords as a spam indicator. Yeah. So if your site is, you know in very good standing, you've never done anything dodgy, you've never had a manual penalty, but from 10 years back, you've still got on your main page five or six, five or six keywords sitting in there, meta keywords sitting in there, it won't be a problem. If you go and start being a bit naughty and you somehow get picked up either on algorithmic or a manual penalty, um, and a particular page on your site has got some unnatural links pointing to it, and that's why you picked up a penalty, and in your meta keywords, you've got like 60 shoved in there, which, yeah, <laughs> people do that, um, and they are just like, um, you know, every freaking keyword you can possibly bloody imagine and that don't even exist on that page, in those instances, Google reserves the right to use it as a spam indicator. So, if you're fine, you've never done anything dodgy, um, and you've had those 10 keywords sitting in there, personally, I just strip them out to maybe the three main ones that are actually on page to maybe three, but even if you don't, if those 10 have been sitting on there for the last 10 years, you've never done anything wrong, don't ever anticipate doing anything wrong, then there's no point in removing them. Um, it won't yeah. hinder you and it won't harm you, but that's assuming you don't go and cock it all up by buying some fiber links down the road next month. Um, so it's entirely up to you, but if you wanted to just clean things up for your own sake, for your client's sake, or for you're working for a company but you don't know one day when you leave, the next idiot that comes along might go and do something a bit untoward, for your own sake then you might just strip them out to let's say the one main one that what the page is about, or, or you might just empty it, or just leave three in or two in, but you know it's entirely up to you. Yeah, I think I think that's that's my attitude to, to these things as well. These days, if I'm setting up uh, a new site or working on a new site or adding new pages, then I don't put um, I, I just don't bother with the meta keywords tag. Um, if I find a load of junk in them, I mean junk. I, I, what I mean by junk is um, keywords, lots of keywords um, that uh, have got some notional hope that uh, this might might, uh, um, might rank for, uh, but has no content to go with it on the, the page, then they get deleted. Um, and if there are, if there's what seems to be a reasonable number of um, uh, of key phrases, maybe three or five. Uh, keywords on on uh, w within the um, within the meta keywords tag, then fine, leave them. Um, I, I kind of see see this as a um, as a one way street or a ratchet or something. Uh, in as much as you can possibly cock up your SEO by having loads of uh, rubbish in them, but you can't get any um, advantage by uh, putting the right things in it either. <laughs> Yeah. 
Did you guys get um, some musical notes coming coming through I the did. broadcast? Then? Yeah. Yes. I, I couldn't actually match the pitch of my speaking with them, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry about it. I, I, I think it's my computer. You're playing with your organ again, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, Nick, well, Chris, I hope um, you're happy with that. Here's one from Thomas McMahon uh, on knowledge graph and schema markup. Uh, Thomas came across this knowledge graph bleed over directly uh, in his Chrome search bar today uh, while misspelling revenant. I don't even know what revenant means. Um, has anyone seen anything similar to this in other niches? I've been able to replicate it for other movies and big releases, but I haven't seen an answer like that before. Also, uh, can anyone confirm if this is schema markup helping to determine that? I can't even tell which page they're getting this from, since the actual search engine results page just gives the info without uh, citing a source as well. Um, well, that the, 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 those are search queries. That's not actually a knowledge graph. Um, those are just based upon um, relevant queries that people have searched for. Um, you've got the So, so th those are different. Now, I wonder if he means, obviously, where he's taken the screenshot, you've got the December 25th behind it, which is part of a, um, not really a knowledge graph, it's part of uh, a search knowledge snippet. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily have to be marked up. From page, um, Google will tend to find the most authoritative um, site that is displaying when, or they can work out when this actual movie is um, showing or when it's being released, and then they will d display the date. Um, you will see it also um, for different queries around, you know, you might have a medical query, you might have a, you know, you might type in something on like medicine or colour of paint or something in terms of, and you get these snippets. Um, at the minute, no, a lot of them are not marked up. Google just takes that extraction from, from the site and shows it as a, you know, a, a featured snippet. Um, but a lot of those are marked up. Um, so, no, I don't think, um, yeah, I mean, so to answer the, the thing, the, in your screenshot, you've got all the misspellings, um, those, that's got nothing to do with that, that is just predictive, and there's obviously been a lot of bloody people misspelling it, um, and searching for that, and that's why Google's giving you that misspelling. The behind your screenshot, the December 25th, um, no, that's, it's not in the knowledge graph, that is in a search snippet, but um, it's being pulled from, uh, I can't tell you where it's being pulled from, but it is being pulled from, um, you know, one of the authoritative sites. Wikipedia, likely. Uh, well, actually, the image on it is being pulled from a YouTube. The knowledge panel is showing a trailer for it from YouTube. Let me go to YouTube and see who has released that, and then we can see uh, what the crack is. Um, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, naturally, there you go, mate. It's from Google. It's Google. It's Google's uh, own own trailers. Um, doo -doo -doo. 
film and animation, uh, they aren't linking to a site, so unless I start go diving in here, I won't be able to find exactly who. But yeah, so none of those are actually specifically marked up. But let's say, for example, um, it's always a good idea, you know, I mean, <laughs> This is what Google says. It's obviously you need to mark up articles if they contain, for example, a movie in it or a clip of it. You can mark up that in your article or your page. Uh, if you do events, you can mark up events. Those are quite prevalent. So if you're in the movie, mark. So if, for example, you're ser searching the Revenant release date and you actually go down, you'll see some cinemas already that are producing the event snippet further down. Uh, and those are from their own site with the event markup on. So those do have. But as for that, Google just understands that, you know, for the December 25th, they obviously, boom, everybody's saying it's December the 25th, so naturally Google is quite confident in displaying December the 25th. You get the same thing for, like, um, if you search, oh, I don't know, IBM customer service number. You know, because there are hundreds of sites referencing it, you've got IBM authoritative site, it references customer service number, they are quite sure that, hey, if I display the main number here, um, I'm pretty cool with that. Um, I mean, uh, last time I checked, I just want to check something also. Um, now, for example, I've just had a quick double check on mine. My, my site is called Online Ownership, and I've just typed in Online Ownership telephone number, uh, search query it, and that is marked up on my site, and it's just it's just given me a search snippet also. At the very top, um, first result, given the exact phone number, it's also given the area dialing code, and it says Online Ownership phone. Um, so, in the case of something that, so just to roll back, in the case of something that Google can see everywhere, that it knows totally exactly what's going on, which is the release date of this, there's 500 movie theaters, movie sites, um, you know, all the production people, everyone's saying December the 25th, Google doesn't need schema markup, he, they can just, you know, work out that, boom, that is the that is the um, date. In terms of, for example, myself, that is appearing because Google is confident because I've marked that up. This is the company. This is the telephone number. So um, in some cases, they need schema. And in some cases where there's high authority and there's a lot of data telling them one thing, they don't need markup. Cool. Anybody else? Right. Um, Thomas McMahon, I hope that covers it for you. Um, now we have one from Naraj Pandey on uh, Ajax crawling. Um, so Google made an announcement today uh, about A Ajax crawling, and uh, it's now been deprecated, and uh, they've given up the fight. Um, so the answer for Naraj uh, may, may be different uh, now uh, than the one we would have given last week. But anyway, I'll read it out. I don't think it's that long. Uh, I need my Ajax crawling for which I have pages like x2y destination.aspx. When Ajax loads it, it becomes x2y destination.aspx. Um, today hyphen deals tomorrow hyphen deals, date hyphen deals, depending on the query. Now the search engine is not going to crawl Ajax. Um, means, means what I know is that we need to serve an HTML snapshot to the search engine. Currently, the search engine only fetches general URL x2y destination.aspx. 
Um, do you have any idea if we set in our server to serve the same day first query cache saved and deliver that to the search engine? Um, in, in fetch as Googlebot, it will be showing like uh, uh, like crawling Ajax. Is interlinking like connecting every page from every page would be better, or only relevant pages from every page will be better? What is your sense? Sorry, I can't give a um, educated answer on that. We need Alistair here for that. I invited Alistair down to my, my, my place for a barbecue lunch. He wanted appearance money. <laughs> I do like Naraj Pandey's uh, comment in the um, in the answers um, to this this topic, uh, which can be seen on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus. Naraj says, "I have gone through both of these articles, uh, the, the, uh, two linked articles that uh, Dave Elliott gave him, um, and and want to contact the developers to send uh, to send the HTML snapshot to Google." But I ask this question here um, to find out more and better experienced people's views on this issue. Good on you, Naraj. That's very kind. Well, I, I think it's, it, it's all moot now. Um, Google has, has proposed, um, well, it, it, it stopped saying that they'll be able to, to, to search um, those after trying since 2009. Nobody else? Sorry, Naraj, um, we, we don't have anything for you there, mate. Here's one from Matt Rains on linking back to a news source. Uh, Matt said, hi all. If I'm writing copy that contains a lot of duplicate copy from news sources, what is best practice to link back get to the original news source. When we look at uh, placing links, referencing the actual original news source continually through the copy, it just doesn't fit right. One solution we've suggested is to use footnotes and then in the footnotes at the bottom of the page, link out to the news source uh, from there. We've also uh, mentioned uh, using block quotes around the actual copy content. Does anyone have any suggestions to, to best deal with a lot of duplicated copy in this manner? We don't um, really want to just add lots of links throughout the body of the copy. Um, other suggestions that follow best practice will really help. Thanks in advance. Yes, Vish, um, in one of our forum heroes, answering uh, on the SEA questions community, um, he said, one, you can use uh, across the main canonical to the original article, um, or two, use resources links um, for the original article. Now, Matt Rains responded and said they're doing one and two. I wonder why across the main canonical would, would be useful. Um, because it's, it's going to stop, I mean, why, why publish something um, and then um, canonicalize it back to somebody else's site? I don't see the point of that. Besides, is, is it um, verbatim copies? 
uh, one to one copies, or I thought there were many sources in one article. Or am I have I read that wrong, understood wrong? Because you know, if you're quoting from different sources, you can't canonicalize to one of those sources, because then you won't be acknowledging the other sources in the same article. And also, the page that you're publishing it on is not likely to rank, is it? No, because it's a yeah, copy of I mean, something. Yeah. I be, I be. Okay, I can understand what he's doing. So let's say he's got a new, new site. He sees, uh, you know, something interesting that pertains to his readership news. Right, I want to write about that. Okay, I wouldn't canonicalize back to them. Certainly not. Um, what I would do, though, is, you know, Google is more than happy because every news agency in the world does this. They put their own interpretation onto that. Now, if, for example, you see a news article, you rewrite the article with your own interpretation onto it, that, that's fair play. And you might, in it, do a little bit of a quote, say, um, as quoted in the as quoted from and you you might want to you might want to say the source and then put a little snippet from their article in but if you're doing this the majority of, if I was doing it, if this was my site the majority of my content would be completely rewritten from my point of view that that's certainly what I'd be doing I wouldn't be l literally just copying the entire article and then maybe just giving a one-liner introduction, you know, uh, recently today released on whatever site. Uh, I wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't be canonicalizing back. I would rewrite totally with my own interpretation and my own view on it. And then if I wanted to, I might put a question mark, you know, like a, a quote in there, uh, and then just, um, you know, View this. You know, this is this is the source. Uh, you could even go as far as no following that source if you wanted to. I mean, um, but if you look at other news news outlets and news agencies, when they quote someone else, they don't even they just say from the Sun or from the Guardian. They don't even link out anymore. So, as you know, but my for me, I would totally rewrite it and put my own interpretation on it. Therefore, it's my content, my interpretation. Yes, the new story was out there, but it's 100% unique to my site and my readers. You know, in 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 the voice that they, you know, are coming to you for. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I just 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 about to say. Yeah, I think it's it's right. I think. Um, I think what Tim says is absolutely right. Uh, in fact, you know, in, in, if if I were to take a a, a slightly um, hard view, you know, this is exactly what Google is trying to to stop, isn't it? Um, Large scale um, copying of content um, in in a, a way of you know what? What are you adding to it? You're you're not adding very much to it uh, by by doing the doing this uh, large scale copying and quoting. Um, you know you you do need to create your own unique content, or or Google won't like what you're you're putting on your site. Um, I think that you know that that's that's the way to look at it. It's not a case of trying to find a way uh, to make Google likes something that it's already well recorded as saying it doesn't want uh, on the web. So, as Tim says, rewrite, put your own words to it. You don't even have to put your own slants to it. You've just got to put your own words to it. End of. Excellent. Well, I see we've just been joined by Edwin Yonk and uh, Micah fischer kirstner Edwin is CEO of IDIS Host uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, it's 
uh, you can find him at I-D-E-S-T, uh, H-O-S-T dot N-L. Um, Edwin is an SEO. And also a, a web host. Um, Mike Fisher kirstner is Senior SEO Manager um, for Zendesk.com in the USA. And also uh, a well-known SMX conference speaker. <laughs> I'm just reading your profile here, Micah. Yeah. Uh, and you're also a chess champion. You swear in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Going through details today. <laughs> uh, I got them in front of me. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so let's um, move on to the next. From uh, Michael Mason. Um, it's websites in multiple languages. Um, he said, okay, uh, here's what I'm thinking, which is best. A website using Google Translate, um, a website with dedicated pages translated individually, and separate domains on TLDs for each language um, translated individually. Any thoughts? And um, he's also an optimist. Uh, he's um, called in John Mueller. I think Federico Sasso gave a great set of answers. Um, don't use Google Translate uh, because a machine translation isn't going to be great. And I think it is considered auto-generated content. Um, so uh, no, so don't use Google Translate. You can offer it for people to translate on your site, uh, but don't translate something using Google Translate and then put it, that on as content on your site, if that makes sense. As for the structure, it doesn't really matter. It's, what, it's, it's a matter of preference, I think. Um, and as Federico um, suggested, um, registering different TLDs can be problematic. And you know, if you are targeting German speakers instead of German speakers in Germany or people in Germany speaking different languages, you know, does it make sense to have a .de, for example? You know, if you are, um, you know, if you have a site, uh, if you have site translated in Italian, does it make sense to have a .it address if the content is essentially global? It's about the language, not about location, because TLDs are more about, in a sense, location than about language. Yep. The the only one that you sh should really consider having your own sort of TLD on would be for China. Uh, Beidou is massively, massively, massively geared to uh, ranking Chinese domains. Hmm. Is it the same in Russia, Tim? With Yandex? Sorry? That's that. <laughs> Tim just what? got back from China and Mesotaki. I thought he came back from Moscow. On the <laughs> 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 um, oh, I'm going to get in trouble one of these days with you lot. <laughs> okay, let's uh, call um, Michael Mason's query answered. And um, now we have one from Amanda Paluski. Amanda um, said, hi, it's kind of a long question. Uh oh, okay. Um, we're redesigning our website through an external vendor. The external vendor has created a test site on a WordPress subdomain under their own main domain. Our plan uh, is to migrate the uh, test site over to our current live domain and implement our redirect plan. 
The problem uh, is that uh, the external vendor has not answered, uh, added, I should say, no index, no follow to the tags, and Google has indexed the site. <coughs> What's the best way forward here in terms of SEO? I had thought I could unindex the entire test site before we make it live, but that doesn't look like a possibility anymore. Yeah, just just no index it and then go into um, Google's search console and um, uh, request the whole test subdomain test domain to be removed. Um, it's temporary in terms of its impact, which is pretty much what you need so that when Google comes back to try to crawl the site, they'll say, oh, hey, no index, and not put it back in their index. So um, that that should be sufficient to resolve um, what the, the problem of having the duplicate domains in the index. Yeah, um, I, I think I've found Dave Elliott, who's never ever made a mistake for, who's made a mistake in one of his answers. He said that I'll get them to add the no index and no follow tags, uh, block your site in robots text, and then remove the entire subdomain from the Google index using Google Webmaster Tools remove URLs. Um, he got the next bit right. He said I'd then slap your devs for being sloppy, um, but. If he, if he uh, blocks the site in robots text, uh, Googlebot can't read the no index and no follow tag. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that part is a little... Uh, so so here, here's the fun part. If you're going to be, if you're able to just basically tell the whole domain inside a search console to take it out, then um, Here's a fun question. What happens when Google comes tries to come back and put it back in the, the index? Yeah, there's that. Do you know what I'd do? Nobody cares, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would canonicalize the dev site to the, to the new to the, 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 the new live site. And just leave it there um, for a while. I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Yeah. That, that gives, that, that gives um, Googlebot a, um, a running start. Well, what if um, there's a uh, comment spammer on, right? Then you run canonical uh, to the to your paid uh, uh, to your TLD. Uh, well, in the comments there are all Viagra and I don't know what what else, but. But the content there won't be factored yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody's moderating the test site, right? <clears throat> no, 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 but but Google's not going to look necessarily. Well, depending on how extreme it gets, generally, the rest of the content they're just going to see doesn't match up. That's really what what they're going to look for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think it's safer to do the no index one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not a. It's an interesting idea, but I'd probably just no index. Yeah, just no index because yeah, because robots thing could complicate things, and because it's on a different site, there is no issue with the crawl budget, right? Because that would be one reason I think that you might want to have no in, um, using robots. Txt is when you have a, a really large site and you know. Having those pages crawled is taking up your budget. Then that that might be an issue. But otherwise, I think sticking mm. to no index would be the sensible thing to do, as it were. Yeah. I want to do a no index and uh, row canonical to um, the other TLD. I want to do that either. Yeah, don't just, mess up the no index and canonical. Agreed. Yeah, because that that's just going to throw in some confusions to the bot.
So we've just been joined by Siraj uh, Gadigay. Um, Siraj is an SEO uh, um, from uh, India in Pune. All right, let's um, move on um, from uh, Amanda's question. I, I thought Tim Kappa would make more of this one. Um, here's one from Tyson Richardson on missing coordinate. I'd like to get the consensus from the SEO community about whether or not a missing coordinate is a problem in the case of an address like these. Um, uh, 7850 S Dean Martin Drive. Um, these addresses get reformatted by Google Maps without the S coordinate. I have uh, multiple business listings in other data providers that still contain the S coordinate. Will Google consider this as inconsistent uh, information? No, because the actual address is, for example, 78510 Martin Drive. The S is only annotating which flow of traffic your side of the road you're on. So it is not an integral part of the address. Um, I don't even know why you guys do it, but um, no, it, it won't. It won't. Uh, it's not an integral part. It's only for I, well, I have no idea why you put them in, but um, uh, no, the actual address is the 7850 Dean Martin Drive. That is the physical address. Um, so it's not going to be a problem if a lot of them have it in and you have a couple missing. Obviously, I would still try and keep them all consistent, especially consistent with the address that you have on your actual business page. Or if you don't have a business page, uh, than on your main site address. Um, so I would try and keep it consistent to what you're actually displaying on your your main site, um, you know, address and your business page. But if there happen to be a few that leave out the S, it's not a problem. I don't think it is a problem either. If you search for the, the addresses you gave, um, Google um, rewrites them um, to uh, the format without ads. So um, yeah. for Google, they are already the same, right? Yeah, yeah, it's already the same. It's just yeah, for, yeah, and Google understands Google. that this is the same because if you search with this, yeah, um, I mean, Michael will you, explain to us why the hell they do it. I don't understand it. When you're looking for an address, like I'm looking for an address, I look for the address. I don't want to know which side I'm approaching from, I suppose, but you just cross the road if you're on the wrong side. <laughs> You've been that way since the water bodies. <laughs> May it rain right. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. May it rain heavily on you. <laughs> All right. Um, have we given an answer for Tyson Richardson, do you think? Let's record that as a yes. Here's one from Sam Williamson. Uh, um, an improvement besides writing content. Um, I'm sure David Roseanne would be very pleased to hear that. Um, he said, I've been asked to write some content for this site. Um, is there any reason that this site is not ranking very well? Um, and do you have any suggestions for improvement besides writing content? I would appreciate it if you didn't share, oh, the site on air, I might get a spanking. 
So I won't share the site on air. I um, don't know how I can do this. Uh, let me see. Um, here we are. Um, and go to the next. And okay, so I'm not, not sharing the site on air, but you guys can see it uh, on your uh, run list there. Yeah. So, I you know I took a look um, at the site just really quickly here, and then um, just a quick report with with SEM Rush. Um, the first thing that I kind of noticed is I had expected the site to be much more of a um, website, so to speak, um, and actually hitting upon it, it's, it's an, it looks more of a blog and an affiliate site at or affiliate blog at that. Um, so those things right off the bat kind of get me a bit concerned. Um, the uh, concern then in that case is Google does if it, it, there are stricter guidelines when you're an affiliate site than than the regular site, and um, um, Google tends to not like affiliate sites if you don't provide any added value, um, and if it's you know, generally just affiliate type information. Um, so that's kind of one of the concerns that comes to mind, and just kind of the uh, kind of theme that I look at when I see something like uh, this with a blog, um, because for the most part, many of the pages don't provide a lot of detail. Um, you know, uh, take one example of, of kind of a page and one one of the posts. There's there's no pictures. Um, in fact, the one I'm looking at doesn't even have any affiliate links because I have ad block on. But in any case, um, yeah, it, it, that's probably kind of one of the concerns that I have on that right off the bat. And of anything else, in a lot of ways, if you don't really kind of handle this area with, with the affiliate side of things, um, given that it's, a, I should say, given that it's an affiliate site, that's going to be the biggest issue out of any other kind of optimizations you do. Um, it's just one of those things that Google's going to knock on. Um, in terms of some of those minor things, um, you need to make sure that um, you know, you're only using one you know, header per page, or one, one H1 tag per page, um, that your images are using alt text, um, kind of, um, let's see, what is this? It, you know, if if everything is around kind of the theme, I'm trying not to use what the site is about if we can't talk about it on air. Um, make sure you're kind of using that right away versus as part of your brand name, um, and make sure as well that your brand name spacings matches up. So like, I'm seeing kind of how you're putting the name of the brand in the title tag, which doesn't match how it looks on the page. There's <clears throat> kind of you know make sure the the, the Spacings make sense. So it's if it's includes a space as part of the brand name, then that should be in the title just for consistency, because um, it kind of seems odd otherwise. Um, the site kind of looks new. Uh, there's you know not a not a lot of information. Um, it has pages that say zero comments, but yet I can't comment on the article. So you know, I look at it and I go, mm, this kind of looks like spam um, through and through. So that's pretty much kind of my concern right off the bat when I, when I look at a site like this. Yeah. My first impression was that of confusion. When I open the site, I'm not so sure what the site is for. I mean, if you look at the menu, below the title it says About Us, Products, home, and privacy policy. So why am I not man? It's, that order just seems a bit weird. Why is the home or the third one on the list? Mm -hmm. Might be the first one. No, it just confuses me. And I'm not so sure whether it's a review site or an affiliate site. I mean, it. Oh, it's an affiliate. There, there's it, Amazon. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, this is an affiliate site, but it's trying to set itself, I think, as a review site. That's the, sort of the impression that I get from reading the first few lines. 
mm. and obviously, um, so I think that that causes a bit of a confusion. Um, you could say uh, we have reviewed so many items, we like these things, so we're going to show you, categorize them, or you know, otherwise, so that you can make the right purchase. That would be a very good way of doing things as a potential customer consumer. You know, yeah. am I being targeted because I want to know a particular product, or am I being targeted because I want to purchase something? So there seems to be sort of what would be the right word um, imbalance or um, lack of clarity about the purpose when I land on the site for the first time. Yeah, um, it, it, it is a it is quite quite ambiguous in places. It does say most of the feedback we get from our customers centers around the quality and value of money value for money of this um, but they're being referred as an, uh, there, there's an affiliate referral uh, there's a big button that says go to another site and purchase um, so yes I, I agree with you there the, the other thing is that the the copy is painful mm. to me reading it. It just kind of wombles on and wibbles on and it's all very flat. Um, I don't get the I don't get the feeling that whoever's written it is rem remotely interested in this subject. <laughs> And if you look at the website, it's kind of just, you know, I see it is just five blog articles. And what I wonder is every time, like, when I see a question like this, they just start a new site and they expect, you know, their site to rank. But I was just trying to uh, put certain keywords, like zombie costumes guy and uh, some other keywords. I was trying to look at the results which are appearing. And I see that most of the results are uh, from authoritative websites, like we have eBay, Hollywood, costumes, .com. So these already authoritative websites which, you know, ranking. And uh, if you want to get yourself ranked for these kind of keywords, you have to do some off-page activities. And you just said, like, the content which is is not that great content. So I think he needs to work on the content. And first, when I saw the website, I, I thought, like, it's an affiliate website where you can buy from the costume. That's what I got the first impression. But when I tried to dig a little deeper into that, it, it, it says, uh, in about, it's about providing, it's like a place for zombie costumes or reviewing the zombie costumes, which I don't see any kind of content. So obviously there's no clear uh, uh, objective which I see here. And uh, besides whatever content uh, they're trying to write, I don't even see a kind of what people you're trying to target. And because example, if I look at the days of dead costumes or trip Australia, so I don't see any kind of a search volume or kind of a search trend for those keywords. So I think he needs to choose the keywords wisely and write actual good content if you have to outrank these competitors, which are already ranking these keywords. Uh, another interesting thing which he can do is, even if it's a new website, what you could do is, which I uh, I say by the concept is, boring domain authority of external platforms. So in this case, so for one of the keywords, I saw the Pinterest uh, profile was ranking. So somebody who has a Pinterest profile who has uh, pinned the uh, costumes of Halloween, that was ranking. So maybe if the man from getting the traffic through the website, you can uh, think of you know, getting traffic uh, through like Pinterest. If you have a lot of images of costumes which you're going to review, you can try probably getting a Pinterest board and optimize it for keywords that you want to rank for. Okay, Siraj, um, I, uh, this is not your fault, um, but there's a, a, a bandwidth issue somewhere and it made a lot of your answer um, unintelligible. Did you get the same, uh, David, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Siraj, I wonder if you wouldn't mind if, if you would um, to consider um, adding your answer on, on to the, the topic on, on the uh, SEO questions community um, because the bits I did get 
sounded um, like a worthwhile answer. Thank you for that. All right. Um, let's. Unless anyone has anything to add, we can move on from Sam Williamson's question. Um, just out of curiosity, um, if you are selling things via affiliate, do you have to declare that somewhere? No. Per FTC. No. Good. Uh, F the F FCC in the U.S. is a guideline. <clears throat> um, how much of a strong guideline is up to you on that? But um, at least for Google, obviously, if it's affiliate stuff, then then um, you do have to know follow those those links. Actually, you're quite right, Mike. Or I, I forgot I forgot that uh, in the U.S. Um, you have to declare. Uh, um, if you're recommending it in a blog or, or something like that, you have to declare uh, um, a potential earning from your recommendation. Yeah. I, I, I do that on my blog in the, in, in the UK when I occasionally um, recommend a, uh, um, a, a product or a service. Um, I feel that because it's, it's generally expected or I, I think it's just it, it, it's fair and it's good practice to say so because there's an expectation of a great deal of my a great, a great proportion of my visitors that I will tell them yep. you wouldn't tell them that you run a Mac though would you <laughs> no I, I never say that in public at all uh, that I, I run a Mac um, a 27-inch iMac uh, and a MacBook Air, and I've got two Mac Minis. Um, I wouldn't mention that never, because people might come come and think I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be an advantage. I mean, nobody uh, would rob your house if they were looking to steal PCs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on so to the next one. From... Just because I said about your organ earlier, no, no need, no need to come back so hard at me. Oh God! <laughs> that was unintended. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, um, this is going to be edited, isn't it? <laughs> Peter Stakes uh, asked a question on how search engines understand a search query. Um, Peter said, hello, I'm new here and to SEO, but I have a nagging question. Uh, do search engines understand that searches may type, say, I lost my car keys, and English web text might say, how to find your car keys? Or do we have to write how to find my lost car keys, which sounds wrong to me, um, in our content and descriptions uh, um, and everything else? Uh, he said, sorry if it's, if it's been covered before, Peter. No, Google's pretty good at uh, figuring out what you're writing about. So a lot of my articles will be uh, about things that are related to what I think people are going to be typing and Google is usually pretty good about uh, finding what you're, type, what you're writing about and then ranking you for it. So I wouldn't do an exact match query, just start writing about what you want to rank for and then make sure that in your title that you're going to be uh, basically specifying uh, something that's going to be related to that. So if you're just going to write about how to find uh, lost car keys, put that and most likely um, you'll also rank for uh, I need help finding my lost car keys, assuming that you wrote a pretty good article and that you have everything that you need in it uh, to rank for it. I think that um, I think you can give uh, Google a help here. Um, if you if you pop over to keywordtool.io and put your, your main key keyword key phrase in there, uh, they'll give you a, a nice list of um, a fairly semantically um, related key phrases to, to your main one. Um, have a look at those that have got 
got some uh, some sort of search numbers on and put them through through your copy. So you know, very much as Chase is saying, you know, write variations, but you can actually get a a feeling for what what those variations should be. Um, you know, you you can actually see what people are searching on. Um, so you can uh, you can help help um, help Google by using the uh, semantic um, the, the semantically uh, related phrases that uh, that it already knows about. If that makes sense. Certainly does. Anybody else? Well, they are they are quite different, right? Um, if you search for "I lost my car keys," um, you might be locked out. So, you might need someone to open your car and how to find your car keys. Um, you probably need tricks on how to find them again, right? Yeah, I, I need them. I'm always losing my car keys. <laughs> 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 I don't get on with keys in general. <laughs> <laughs> so those are those are not really related, are they? Or no, they're they're different. They're different views on the same kind of topic, aren't they? Different approaches yeah. to it. Yeah, you can put it on a, on the same blog, but different. To me, it will be different articles. No. I, Provided that you really aren't stretching the uh, um, the patience of your readers by by too much overlap, yes, write write different articles. I think there's um, I, I think the theming and focusing uh, along a a particular line for a uh, for a page for an article for a blog post is is a good thing. Um, Think think of it as you know maybe think of it as a story. Think think of what you're saying being around a um, a, a central line, if you like. Um, you know, don't go off in too many directions. I know what I mean. <laughs> and maybe if you search on uh, mobile, uh, you get more articles. Uh, um or you get um, articles um, about uh, how to break into your own car if you type in "I lost my car keys." Oh, oh yes, that would be useful. You, you might get different contexts. Interesting to do with what? Interesting things to do with wire coat hangers might come up. Okay. Any more um, for Peter Stokes' question? Moving on to the next, and this one is from Malakajuna S. Uh, and he or she asks, "Hi everyone, uh, can you suggest something for me? Uh, I have a local business project to rank." top position on the search engine results pages. I need to target 15 plus areas or locations in a city um, with targeted keywords uh, that are area wise. Um, and so for this, which one is better in the following? Um, one, only one page. And on this page, can I target all the areas with um, all the area wise keywords with a mix of content? Or two, a separate page for each location. Uh, kindly give me your suggestions. Thank you. Um, I think there's, I think there's a, uh, a question. There's a question here, and there's an implied question. Um, the, the answer to the question uh, in the, as as laid out here, is number two. Um, a separate page for each location, but surely this is a uh, an exercise in, or potentially an exercise in local SEO, uh, depending on how how big big a city this is. 
um, rather than a straightforward top position in, in the SERPs, in the, the non SERPs. So think, you know, think about setting up uh, Google My Business pages for each of the uh, uh, the local, uh, each of the locations, and go go down that route. To try and get, uh, try and put your you know, put your efforts into getting local uh, local SEO results um, rather than the opposition on the SERPs. Although, you know, it depends how big this uh, this um, this city is, I guess. Um, some whenever I've done this, the, the they haven't been uh, they haven't been um, s um, grouped in a very small area, so that's why I'm uh, I'm hesitating a bit. Maybe uh, maybe Tim or or someone who's done more of this than I have um, would uh, give us some information. I actually I've uh, SEO'd for uh, three different counties uh, next to the main county that I live in. And I was able to rank for uh, something like 50 different cities or so, uh, maybe less, maybe like 30. And um, you have the one problem that you encounter when you're doing this is that uh, you can rank for all these different cities, uh, but you have to figure out what keyword you want to rank for. Because if you're creating a um, page for, say, five cities inside of uh, your county, and you want all of your cities to say, like for instance, SEO, uh, you know, Santa Barbara, SEO, Goleta, whatever. Um, you're gonna just rank for that keyword within those uh, pages, unless you put more keywords in those pages. But you're, you usually want to target one main keyword. So it is uh, doable, and I've done it, and I'm, you know, I have results. But you, you want to do your keyword research and figure out what the best uh, keywords are going to be because, um, for instance, I don't get any traffic for those other, you know, uh, smaller cities. I usually just get it for the main city. So that's also on your index and your homepage, you also want to specify um, the counties that you work within. Um, you don't have to put, like, huge descriptions, but it's, it's still good to specify them um, somewhere near the top of your page. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so he's... Oh, damn, I've lost the question now. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, as Chase also said, it, you know, you, it's kind of limited to that, you know, that specific set that, that you're actually doing. If you want to kind of expand on that, you know, literally you've got, you know, a serviced, a, a serviced area landing page. Um, but that doesn't limit you to the kind of content that you can create on there. Naturally, all of them should be, um, you know, unique. You you can't just use boiler, you know, uh, boiler plates for these and then just change the name in it. Um, but you can, up, you know, you can really go to town on on terms of the content that you provide. You can um, then, you know, if you if you're experienced in a particular area, or you offer a specific service to a particular area that you're not offering in another area, then you can include that in our services, and of course that would increase the likelihood of a keyword mix in that because you're adding an additional service into that area. Um, uh, now I. Don't know what you're doing, but let's say it's um, uh, you know I don't know a pest controller, and you've actually taken on a few jobs within that particular area, and one may have been for bees in a in that area within that road. Um, you could create sort of like little mini pages within that because you could be here's case studies for this particular area. We um, sorted out this B problem at such and such an address, or not the full address, but maybe just the road in that, a couple of images, how you dealt with it. Uh, what you're doing is you're reinforcing that page within that area, but also you're increasing that mix of content 
in that specific area. So not just being a pest control for whatever county, but now you're also branching out into bee removal. Um, you did a, oh, you know, like a rat infestation further down the road and you couple of pictures and you know you list the, the road and sort of the area you don't want to obviously do the address but images and blah 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 so this reinforces that you've worked in the area in and around you're creating little different node points of of um, of work that you've undertaken uh, in that area so you know don't think of it as just a single serviced area page um, really sit down with a client, understand what they've done in the area, and things like that. If your client then just says, "Oh well, I do the same thing for all the pl well," it, do you know what I mean? I slap the client invoice in, <laughs> do the do the do the boilerplate because you know this this idiot doesn't actually care. Um, do the boilerplate and move on, mate. <laughs> um, but seriously, if you sit down with a client, understand their business, what they do in those areas, are there any key differentiators? Have they done anything different in one area to another area? Get the images, the case study. Get You can really go to town and you can exponentially increase that content mix for those areas. Um, I don't, like, same again, you know, giving you more ideas here. I don't know what you're doing, but let's say you're kind of... A, I'm assuming it's service, but um, do you have any uh, individual uh, agents in that area? Do they have a shop front, things like that? Can you create sort of, you know, somehow affiliations with those people? Do you have suppliers? Can you get onto their site and link him back to those? Um, do you have distribution agents perhaps in those areas? Do they have a website? Can they? Can they name you on their site, link back to that location page? Can you reference them in with their address on those pages? So you kind of, what you want to do is, rather than just having the one county or that one area, you want to really kind of say to Google, hey, this is where we worked within the county and, you know, we're here, we're legit. Look at these names, addresses. These are the people that we've worked with. This is what we do in that area and, you know, you reinforce that location and the whole mix. So um, really sit down with a client and work out the best way. Don't go boilerplate. And like I said, if he doesn't care, well then do the boilerplate and go to the next one. That no, does care. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. I really like what uh, Tim is saying. Uh, just don't bulk upload 50 plus. Uh, pages for different areas. Uh, slowly work uh, work those areas, right? Um, basically what Tim says, if you have work, um, create a blog article about it, uh, mention the location, and throughout the year you will notice that more and more areas are added to your uh, website. Yep. Of course, David Rosan would have no problem limiting himself to one page a day. Ah, I've just come back. Whoa. And I heard my name mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed all that, so I'll just say yes or no, whichever is uh, appropriate. All right. Um, moving on from Malika Jenner's uh, question, we're going on to... The next one on our run list, which is number 13 for Mui's bin Hamid. Um, Mui's uh, um, said, hello, people. I'm back with some interesting findings and would like to know your thoughts on it. I am starting an online store, um, and for that I was searching for the right keyword so that I can choose the domain name accordingly. I found one keyword, bracket, sorry, I won't be sharing it. That's okay, mate. Um, and my tool said that it's hard to rank for that keyword. I used two different tools to check if it's indeed hard to rank, um, and both tools gave the same result. Top 10 results on Google, although most of them have like a million links, 
Um, but they are not optimized for that keyword. Keyword doesn't appear in the title, um, nor in the content, and neither in the meta description. Not in H1 tags, bold, italic, etc. And some of the, the domains in the top 10 results on Google don't even have a, any backlink anchor text for that keyword. So I thought I can find and rank for this keyword, uh, as I will be having this keyword in my domain name. Sorry, can't share the, uh, the keyword. The first result for that keyword has 299 page links from 46 domains and seven domains linking to that website with the same anchor text. Results down there have like uh, a million uh, of page links. So the last two results on the page um, have fewer page links, like 60 and 80. But again, no keyword anchor text for any of them. Um, and so as per my knowledge of SEO, I can beat them. Uh, though they have plenty of links, but they are not optimized, nor do they have good off-page off optimization for that keyword, um, although they're, they're still ranking for it. I'd like to know your thoughts on whether a new website can beat the big giants out there. By the way, most of the websites in the results are HTTP. Uh, mine will be HTTPS. Uh-oh. Uh, thank you for your time. I look forward to your yeah. reply. Best regards, Moed. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I, I really, I, there's no kind of easy way to say this, so I'm just going to come out with it. Um, firstly, your your keyword in an exact match domain is not going to help you one little iota, especially with a new site. Okay. If anything, especially with a new site, an EMD may even hinder you. So just get that straight out of your brain, okay? Take it out, cut it out, <laughs> right out of that, mate. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah, just forget about it. So, let's say that you really like this domain, okay? Fair dues, great, go with the domain. But forget about, oh, it's keyword rich, it's blah, 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 it's exact match. It doesn't mean diddly, diddly, nothing, 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 especially with a new site, okay? So if you like it, use it, but do not think or rely upon it in that any way, shape, or form, okay? Um, does anyone else want to, like... Oh, I, I thought you were going to continue. I thought you had more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was thinking there's, there's like, like a, a whole... A, a whole, a whole, a whole, a whole <laughs> There's like a whole load of chunks to this, and I thought, well, I don't want to be rambling for, I, I want because everybody's itching to have it. I was waiting for the well, rambling. I just want to see the speech and the sweat falling. <laughs> <laughs> David Roseanne is waving his arms about. He's just discovered his mouse is missing its right click button. <laughs> Um, I think does, does this does this whole question reek of um, SEO a decade ago? It's it's very yeah. very I mean, look, yeah that's yeah. Fair. I mean this is the problem. It's it's you know uh, unfortunately there's a, a million and one articles out there which were written a decade ago that people still read, still find, still think it's legit, you know. Uh. Yeah, and the thing is, there's, you know, it, 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 it's, there's so much has changed. And so, you know, looking at it directly of this specific keyword and the sites that rank don't have the backlinks, that's exact and everything. Well... Google may be associating this keyword with another keyword, so it may just be the case in terms of his analysis that um, let's just do a very simple one. Um, <clears throat> you know, if if we're doing um, a hat versus a cap, 
Well, it may be that everybody's just looking. Google's associated the two as the same, so they may not have any links around cap, but they may all have it around hat. Uh, that type of change, you know, since, for example, like with Hummingbird, um, has, has made a huge difference in that, you know, as long as they're kind of at least using some of the terms in today, then that, that association is really what matters more than it is getting all those kind of the old direct content and links back to the specific page on the term cap. Um, so so that, that's something that kind of came to my, came to my mind on that and, and just kind of the concern that the analysis is kind of a little antiquated. Um, and then kind of the concern of like, since when does HTTP at, is at such a disadvantage than the secured version because um, that really honestly doesn't make a huge difference if at all it has some potential negative uh, implications on the link side. But yeah, so, so there's that whole thing of, of um, just kind of, you know, may want to reconsider that analysis um, on there. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's also things as, as simple as, 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 as a brand, you know, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the anchor text, for, like in Mark said, like cap or hat, it, it might not be. Their anchor text might be to, I love my cap brand, you know, and, and not, you know, or, or it might just be ILC is the domain name and they might have the links to ILC and nothing anchor texted. You know, it, um, we see, you see this all the time with, um, you know, with, 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 with clients that come to you um, with, a, uh, with an e-commerce site and <laughs> they, 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 they'll have, a, for example, a landing page that you say, right, well, on this landing page we want to, you know, uh, yes, we've got the products, but we want to now um, add a little bit of an introduction, what kind of products we can find on this page, things like this. Invariably, they'll say, "Oh, yeah, but but look at this one. Um, it doesn't have anything on it. It's got very, it's got hardly anything on it." Uh, well, then you look at the domain and think, "Okay, well, this brand has been around for 15 years. Uh, it's been online for 10 of those years. Uh, it spends a million bucks um, a month on online, offline magazine. The brand awareness for that." Is is you know is is right up there. In terms of the actual links, it doesn't necessarily need links now because Hummingbird is is sort of a. I mean, links do obviously you need links, but Hummingbird is more about understanding. So, if there are references all over the place between this particular brand and hats, right? Whether it be Online, offline, newspaper, magazines, ads, you know, um, uh, it, people making videos of it, you know, there might not be, there, there might be one or two links coming through, but if this, if Google understands that these guys are the, the, the brand leaders in, in this particular, in this particular um, cap and that, you know, you're going to find it very difficult to, to overtake them based upon just looking at links because there are other, uh, you know, and based upon off page or have they optimized it or, you know, how many anchor texted links they have and how many domains and, uh, you know, those kind of days are rarely gone. It's more of a holistic, a whole holistic approach to to that and, and how Google perceives and what people want to look for when they search for a cap. Um, so just by looking at a keyword, whether it's optimized, whether it's not, how many anchor text and links, how many domains, is not really going to help you in in you know just saying oh if I build this amount of links I can I can get over that. Um, those days haven't been around for. I'm going to say at least six years now. Um, you need to you need to look at the site. Yes, optimize because, of course, you're the new kid on the block. 
you need to optimize your page, you need to provide some great content about that product or what you're specifically doing. Um, obviously the product needs to be good, it needs to be at the right price point, you can't have a shit product and expect to sell it, mate. it's just never going to happen. Um, so the right product, good quality, uh, right, you know, the perfect price point, you need to look at this in an entire holistic thing. Um, <coughs> you know, in terms of because, you, because you, you're the new kid on the block, you really have to ramp up the content you provide to potential users who are going to come to your e-commerce site and how, how you're going to attract them. Um, are you going to create a YouTube campaign? So, um, you know, you're going to get 50 kids running around with your, your shoes on or your t-shirt on. Um, are you going to, you know, you really need to get creative. Um, that kind of stuff will be shared. It will start building your brand. It will start building, building that up. Um, is it a more technical product? Can you provide more technical specifications uh, than anyone else? Uh, can you become the leader that way? Can you know you generate a lot more interest that way to it? Um, you know you need to because you're the new kid. You need to provide more and then some than to any that any of your competitors and and keep providing it and you know. Um, but the whole thing has to come together. You can't just be selling the same product at slightly cheaper and, you know, just because I've got 10 more links, I'm going to rank. Um, you, you really need to sit down and, and plan this whole thing out. Yeah, because it's yeah. not just a matter of having the best product and results. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of having the best result for that particular Query, your, your, your page must be of um, the quality for, for Google to choose it as the best result for that query. Um, all right, um, any more? I think Tim has really covered it. Yeah, yeah. What I miss in his, his uh, story is um, uh, what his uh, value proposition is basically, right? Uh, he only looked at uh, um, at the, at the curies, and then decided uh, to uh, start an online store for that particular uh, keyword. Right? That's that, that's not how you start a new business, right? You need a business plan um, with products that you uh, where you believe in. You uh, maybe it's uh, the price you want to compete on. Maybe it's the quality. Uh, maybe it's your customer service. Whatever. Make make sure that those things are right because. Uh, otherwise, you won't rank at all. all. Right? If it's the same, then um, I wouldn't join that uh, uh, market. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's exactly the same, I would use and you could you could like test the water. You know, if you've got the product, but everyone else is doing it like this, it might just be worth your while. Just creating an Amazon store, you know, there one, it's not going to cost you all the outlay, um, it's not going to cost you the marketing budget, it's not going to, do you know what I mean? And if because if you've got the product, you've got you know a fairly good deal on it, you can sell it at a couple of pence cheaper, you might actually sell a bit more immediately on an Amazon store rather than spending the next year in development and a million pound on your marketing campaign. And you might not sell anything. Yep. However, though, the answer, what's the answer to the question? Can a new website beat the big giants out there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially local business. Um, they they can uh, beat the big giants. Yeah, and, and, and if there's a huge viralness to the new site that is getting a lot of continuing to get a lot of, of, of media attention in a lot of ways. There, there's a good possibility that uh, all that love that kind of starts at the beginning can continue for a while that that might actually lead to a new site outranking. Yeah. Um, 
but, but it does often mm-hmm. need continued backing of of what Google's kind of looking for over time. Yeah, but you need that you need that marketing push. You need to have a good strategy in there, uh, like for like. If you've got a big boy out there um, selling selling these kind of shoes, and you come along and you create a, an e-commerce store to sell the same shoes, maybe a little bit cheaper, okay? That alone is not going to do anything for you. If you just create like for like, it's not going to do anything for you. You need to, you need to find that hook because, you know, consumers are always looking for something. Um, you must understand that just because they're a big boy out there, it, uh, people are fickle with brand. Absolutely fickle because, in theory, you're selling the same product. So therefore, you're still selling the same brand. It's just the site that's selling it. So be the big boy. Yes, it's in people's minds. Yes, they're used to purchasing from it, etc., etc. But you can always take that from them. You can always take that. But you need to really have a marketing strategy in place. Whether that be with bloggers, whether that be with video, whether that be with kids or whatever. Um, and also, like like. Edwin said, you know, start local in that sense. If you're located in a, in a local thing, do you have universities there? I mean, assuming that this is targeted towards, you know, younger people. Do you have universities out there? Can you get something going with, with the younger kids? Can you can you dominate locally first and then build your way up um, to the next city and the next city and the next city? Um, but you need to have a marketing plan in place. It can be done, but you need to get it out there because if you just take like for like, boom, boom, and you just don't market it, it's not going to happen. And and that includes just someone even without a website. If you just go and open your shop down the road, if you're not marketing it, this is, you know, it, online and offline, you know, radio, TV, um, it all depends on your budget, what kind of strategy, who, who, who you're wanting to hook into it. Um, just do, you, I mean, really spend some time and do a little bit of research on on how you can take that product to market. Yep. All right, let's um, move on to the next. So I'd just like to draw your attention, guys, to a, a URL I put in the comments there, which we'll, we'll cover um, after these next two questions. Um. Here's a question from Victor Castellios. Uh, um, he's still looking for for some of his traffic. Yeah. He said, uh, hello, me again with a dumb question. And never dumb. Last week, I got an email saying that Visual Composer had a vulnerability. And after this email, I decided to update the plugin and, and to also update a few other plugins that I use. Everything went okay, and one hour later, I was done with my update. But with this update, I had erased the Google Analytics script. I did check my stats a few days later and found that I was not getting the same amount of traffic recorded. I didn't do anything uh, as I thought this was uh, normal. Um, hang on. I'm sorry about that. I just lost, lost my place. Um, but after two more days, I, I had zero visitors um, showing. Uh, of course, I was getting less and less traffic as I didn't have the Google Analytics script. After adding the script in again, I found that I regained my traffic. But at this point, three days later, I still don't have my normal traffic. Not sure that if this makes sense, but it looks like if you stop using Google Analytics, you stop ranking well. What are your thoughts? Uh, in my update, I didn't change any content on my site. Thanks. Hmm. Well, okay. First off, yeah, we know for like, Google just you know removing and putting back Google Analytics is not going to affect your rankings. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, there would be tons of examples of that out there if that was the case. So. Um, that's more kind of not something to worry about. Um, more likely is to consider um, two possibilities. One that I think Jim, you already noted, um, which which is essentially um, 
whether or not you had double instances of the GA code. The other possibility is, did any of your plugins um, updates break anything on the site and create issues? So the question, of course, is um, <clears throat> what areas of your site has lost traffic? Um, yeah, taking a look and kind of seeing what might have been affected by it. Um, you know, and was that related to any of the plugins that you might have as well updated uh, as well? So those those are kind of some of the things, at least at the start, quick things I would note to, to look into. Yep. Anybody else? Um, also look at uh, the Google Webmaster Console, right? If you see in GA that you uh, you don't have that many referrals from Google.com, um, um, you might want to go to the Search Console and look if if your if your rankings are really dropped or not. Yep. Anybody else? <clears throat> right, moving on to our last question, uh, other than the one we, we're just going to cover, having a look at uh, Bimi Akalofo's site. Um, Jeff Berkner asked a question on doorway pages. He said, said, I'm looking for case studies or examples of pages or sites being penalised for doorway pages. Uh, and he gives uh, a uh, link to a, a March update on the Google Webmaster Central blog. He said, my site has a footer full of them um, from the prior web dev team, and I'm looking for compelling arguments to get rid of them. I've seen the links and, and writing from a range of credible parties, but I'm looking specifically for examples where they have done harm. Um, and the site is cureurgentcare.com slash location slash huntington.com uh, huntington.html And Dave Elliott um, came up with a link uh, to BMW being completely indexed de-indexed for a while because of doorway pages. Yeah. It looks like that was pretty good. That's just what he needed. So, mm -hmm. Good old B&W back in the day. <laughs> Okay, Micah. Um, all right, uh, let, let's um, answer um, um, uh, Femi uh, Akamalofe. I'm sorry, Femi. Uh, um, I've never heard your name pronounced, so uh, that's the best I can do. Akamala Um And you guys can probably try and do a better job than me. But Femi has asked us to have a look at a site, alay.biz, the A-L-A-Y-E dot biz. Femi travels between um, Africa and um, Europe um, and um, records uh, interviews with, with people, uh, um, mainly with a focus on uh, Africa. The link is in the, in the chat. I'd love to work, get some feedback from uh, any of you guys. My first, am I, um, have I got my thing on? Hang on, I'm not, uh, oh, got so many windows open here. Oh yes, I am on. Good. Okay, my first thought is that there's an awful lot of video here, um, and there are there's no s transcripts around, so there's potentially a a, a, um, a, a loss of content, uh, or, or, la or or they're not using or Femi is not using 
um, the opportunity to get some more content on here. Some of the blog uh, blog entries are quite quite nice, long and meaty, but the uh, obviously the, the the video part of it is important, um, and the the usual way or uh, the way that many sites get around the fact that uh, Google isn't very good at sitting there and watching uh, watching videos uh, is to put a, a transcript or at least some kind of um, summary of, of what the uh, what the video is about. Um, the other thing that I notice is it's it's fairly heavy on advertisements. Um, possibly too heavy on advertisements um, considering some of the pages don't have very much content on um, and I suspect that that's not um, that may be upsetting Google um, it's it's a strange sort of site um, I'm not sure quite what to make of it um, you know someone coming to it cold. Um, it may make a lot of sense to, to his uh, his audience, but um, as a non-African in the wilds of West Sussex, um, it looks it looks thin and not very focused. It's it's if if you're going to about us, it talks about a business um, and advertising and stuff, uh, um, uh, video production, sure, that they've got videos on it, but uh, audio production, print media, web publication. Um, so it's a kind of strange, um, strange mixture between um, company site and um, a news magazine almost or features or something um, they they kind of it's it's got a strange kind of dual dual um, personality going on here um, so I I would say that um, perhaps there are two sites here um, but I would I would say that um, the balance between uh, adver advertising and content needs to be addressed, um, and I would I would seriously think about putting some uh, uh, pu putting some uh, transcripts of the interviews up. Um, I haven't looked at uh, all the usual um, SEO things like uh, title tags and. Uh, and descriptions and H1s and H2s. Um, it's easy enough to to check those. There are numerous tools out there, and perhaps while I've been talking, one of our number has been checking that kind of stuff. Um, but that's that's my my start to the uh, <laughs> to our thoughts, I guess. Yeah, I, I yeah, actually. I actually Whoa, I have Whoa, some weird feedback. Have... When I'm talking, it's talking. Um, anyways, yeah, I actually did look at the uh, the titles and some of the technical things about this website um, in terms of SEO. And the well, first thing I noticed was the uh, meta, or sorry, the keyword. Uh, there's keywords in here, and there seems like there's a lot of meta keywords, uh, which seems like it's you know. Uh, it, there doesn't need to be that many keywords if if there even needs to be keywords in general. I think we were talking about this earlier. Hmm. Another thing is is there isn't any way to share these articles. So uh, he lets us um, uh, follow him on social media, which the tabs aren't even working. Some of the tabs aren't even working. Um, as far as as far as the titles go, um, the home page it just says blog in the name of the site. So you know. That should be changed to you know kind of what he's trying to go for with his you know ranking. Um, and in the articles, a lot of them are saying uh, in their titles like um, things that I don't think people are going to be necessarily typing in. It seems like it's more of just a uh, title for a uh, a um, a theme where it's not where 
it's not really a title that people would actually be typing in. I don't know if we're allowed to actually discuss what these titles are saying or not. Um, but other than that, there's uh, no schema, there's no um, OG data, uh, there is kind of a not really a central theme on this website, so there are some things that need to be improved in terms of um, how are they just going to go about SEOing this website, because there's definitely some things missing on it. Fair enough, um, Chase. Um, one, one thing I don't like is the advert space for sale um, directly under the uh, um, title image. Um, I mean, gee, if people want to uh, pay to, to advertise on, on the site, that they'll soon seek out and find a put a link um, to advertising. Um, you don't need to push it there and, and cheapen the the site itself. Um, and the, the ads down the right hand column on the home page uh, um, are um, bad. Um, but um, also we've got bad coding. Uh, if you go to the link uh, subscription, uh, have a look at the text um, in the um, that subscription page, and it's got um, top lux luxury cars, best hybrids, free website builder. That's obviously a, um, um, a a cheap advertisement. I'd get rid of that straight away. Um, it, it because it cheapens the site. Um, yeah, look, I I, I, I first of all, I, I, I um. Look up last month's books and see how much you made from uh, advertising, um, and um, ask yourself whether um, the uh, return from advertising is worth um, screwing up your site and, and, and damaging your credibility. Is that too harsh? I don't think so. I think that's very much in line with what I was saying about the balance between advertising and content. Um, it's, yeah, um, it, it's not, it's not provide, if, if you want, if you want to, uh, if you want to put it in this way, it's not providing a, a good user experience. You come here and you get thrown um, strange and irrelevant ads at you. So, uh, as you say, Jim, it's not uh, it's not making uh, it, it's it's not it's not um, enhancing the, the the site, is it? And it's a shame because Femi, uh, um, I, I don't know, I haven't met Femi in real life, but um, I've known him on Google Plus. Uh, since um, the very, very early days. Um, and he's a creative and um, um, a, a very intelligent and a communicative uh, person. Um, but this site um, that doesn't uh, convey that. No. And there's some interesting things here. I don't know whether this is, uh, I, I think we, we have someone called Tony Kofi being interviewed. Um, I know someone spot with a, the conventional spelling of Tony, who is a jazz musician. I don't know if it, because there's no transcript and nothing about these interviews here. It doesn't actually tell me whether this is the same person and whether I should bother to listen to it or not. Um, it's yeah. Um, I've just Googled Tony Kofi and have found that the uh, sometimes the jazz musician is spelt with an I, so God knows. Um, I'm just feeling a bit confused, and I think that it could be made to uh, work a lot better for people, and doing so would make it a lot more appealing to, to Google as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, and there are a lot of technical issues. Um, yes, I was just about to say that. Sorry. Um, I, I, I just scrolled it in uh, in uh, December uh, for 500 pages because it has something about 720 pages. Um, more than half of them um, have internal nofollow links, so that's not really good. Uh, 177 pages have low text HTML ratio. Um, 64 pages have low word count. Um, and there are some other issues. Uh, 70 pages returned with a, uh, a 400 uh, status code. Um, so that's a 404, for example. Um, there are almost 80 pages uh, with duplicate content issue, and almost 90 internal links are broken. So, yeah, yeah, there are there are many issues with this site. So. Um, basically, it needs a big cleanup. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and the decision being made um, about uh, advertising. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a place for advertising, but it's not above the fold. Mm. And also, if you you don't want all the content back, right? Um, it's just confusing uh, all the, the the different contents. Uh, I was on uh, an article about uh, the, the Mars rover or something about Mars. Now I'm on, uh, uh, on the page if uh, if uh, if the president did Ghana uh, would build a factory. So <laughs> it's quite confusing, isn't it? Tim, are you here? I am here. Yeah, I am here. I'm. I'm. I'm just ho hoping that um, we will hear um, some more people to uh, verify that um, the technical issues need to be done and um, a decision needs to be made about advertising. Maybe yeah, no, gonna... remove remove all advertising and and and. Um, until the, the stats are there, and then uh, introduce ad advertising one tiny piece at a time. Yeah, no, I'll confirm with um, with with everyone. Um, the the suggestions they made are pretty much the big ones they need that needs to be considered for the time being. And if you know, um, a lot of the other stuff after that just kind of becomes more detailed fixes. Uh, they've covered it sufficiently, in my opinion. Okay. One last opportunity to speak. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Femi, I, I hope uh, that you find that, that useful. I, I know it's not uh, nice to have your work criticised, um, um, but uh, sometimes it's um, um, more useful to be brutal. All right, uh, let's um, move on to, it looks like, yeah, I think that we are, yes, um, we've done it again, guys. We've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, now we move on to uh, our weekly SEO news roundup. Um, this is where posts are made on the SEO news community on Google Plus. And um, once a week we come here to talk about them. Um, the first one's a post uh, made by Chase Rayner. Uh, Chase uh, has found a site called getcompass.co. Uh,
So yeah, I originally saw this in a uh, a uh, in the Moz blog by Rand Fishkin. He was kind of talking about some different tools that he uses. I don't know how he's using this, but maybe he was just uh, projecting it for the future. Uh, but basically, it's a app that hasn't been released yet. Uh, but it's supposed to do what SEMrush does and uh, give you reporting on. Uh, Besides traffic, but not for. It's not going to be geared towards organic. It's going to be geared towards uh, ads. So it's going to be able to analyze like Facebook ads, Google AdWords, uh, and then I think other social ads that you can make. So it looks uh, it looks it looks like a good a good little tool, but who knows? Yeah, it's hard to tell the features and. Spotlights that they're showing on on the site are pretty sparse comparisons. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the creator of this uh, actually went up to uh, or contacted Ren to uh, start talking about this in his blog. Maybe there's some sort of deal going on there. Well. It could could just be that uh, they provided more to Rand and provided some information. The site itself, I don't see much, so that's mm. yeah, that part's just hard to to tell. Okay, and we covered this one. Yeah. Okay. Now this is um, on Google's proprietary uh, method for um, mobile magic. Um, and HTML is taking the following approach to analytics. So-called tracking pixels can be embedded into AMP documents as long as they don't use JavaScript. Um, and uh, I think this is a comment from you, is it, um, uh, Edwin? Um, so who decides which JavaScript and what is okay? This is one of the few I actually saw posted on my Facebook feed, and man, were people slamming this project. <laughs> A lot of SEOs, I should say, they were not, they were not particularly happy with this this build. Uh, because they didn't see it to be very SEO friendly and a lot of issues that could occur by people trying to use this in the theory of, oh, this will help speed up the site, but really harm um, SEO, which I thought was interesting. Well, I don't know if it will harm SEO, but um, I do think this will harm the web uh, overall, because what, what's happening here is that basically Google's uh, Google has a cached version of um, of this of the of the site um, in HTML uh, AMP, uh, which stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. Um, that's a, basically it's a subset of HTML. So uh, the protocol is uh, open. It's published on uh, GitHub. Um, but the problem here is that uh, they don't accept every JavaScript. So even if this valid JavaScript, um, uh, they, the project can say, well, we don't accept that. Uh, for example, the Twitter embeds or the Facebook embeds are not accepted in um, uh, AMP. And Google is serving that from their uh, cache and preloading it mainly for mobile users. Um, so it's instant. Uh, articles, right? Because it's preloaded, um, the articles are instant. Um, but Google decides um, which JavaScript is okay and which JavaScript is not okay. So, um, and for the user, uh, for the end user, they're only getting the content from uh, Google, right? They're only connected to Google. They don't go to BBC or uh, the New York Times, for example. Um, which raises the issue, um, what what does Google know about uh, this? Um, Google replied and said, well, we're not going to track additional things. Um, 
we're just going to track what we already do. So that's a lot. Facebook has something similar to this uh, uh, project, which is called Instant Articles. Um, instead of a uh, subset of, of HTML, they uh, decided to go for uh, RSS feeds. Um, and, and <coughs> excuse me. Um, those RSS feeds or the content from those RSS feeds will be on uh, Facebook servers. And if you are in the Facebook app, uh, the articles will be uh, basically instant because they are preloaded. Um, And similar to this project, uh, the instant articles from Facebook. Um, um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it was a good thought too, Edwin. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I catch it someday. <laughs> but the elevated statement is that um, um, there's not a lot of uh, enthusiasm for this uh, latest offering from Google. Would that be a fair comment to make? Yeah, yeah. From the publishers, uh, a lot of publishers, uh, they do love it or do like it um, or support it. Well, they are already inside, right? Um, I don't know. It feels like. Uh, uh, breaking up the web, right, in, in, into different sections. Yep. Uh, this is the, the, the Google section. The instant articles will be the Facebook section. Um, uh, other people mentioned um, Apple News, which has also somewhat similar to this. Um, so there's no internet. There's only subsections of, uh, of web. Or you're connected to Google, or you're connected to Facebook, or Apple. Um, and I don't think that's a good move for um, everyone. Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think we'll close on that and go to the next. Um, you, um, Edwin, you, you. Uh, um, made a post uh, that was titled by Dan as Decoding Google Speak, um, and you made a comment, it's all about the context. Mike Fisher Kirstner shared uh, Jenny Halaz's article, and um, he said, I cannot harp on this enough in Jenny Halaz's article. Read closely and consider context. Um, I'd also add, don't make a rash judgment on the answer. Sit and think what it might mean uh, before jumping forward. Now, all of this is about an article that Jenny Halaz wrote on decoding Google Speak, uh, in which she described uh, answers from um, uh, given by John Mueller, uh, by Gary Illies, and uh, I, I think she even mentioned Matt Cutt. A blast from the past. Did she or not? Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, but yeah, he was the best. Off. No answer. Oh, answer. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I, I I just wanted to point out from my own point of view. Um, I, I did read this article of Jenny's, um, and I, I really don't know. I'd love I'd love Jenny to come uh, and join us. Uh, um, one day soon and tell us where she thinks that uh, John Mueller made a mistake um, and gave a wrong answer. I, I, I don't think that's ever happened. If we had um, um, Rob with us, um, I'm sure he, he sits in on, on all of those. Um, but if we had Rob, I'm sure he'd verify. Does anybody know of any instance where John has made a mistake? Uh, I think she does mention an example. I'm scrolling through the article to find it.
No, no, she doesn't uh, mention an, uh, an example. We know David Roseanne made a mistake. He bought a loaf Max. <laughs> I thought I it was like coming on uh, time SEO questions hang out on air the way things are going to daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised your computers could even handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're, um, they're they're much uh, much better at uh, fighting off uh, mal faults than uh, certain other platforms. Uh, well, look, um, I, I I I don't think Gary Ellis, um has um, said anything unequivocal yet, um, but um, there's a difference between Gary's uh, um, comments and, and um, summations at, at a conference and the, 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 the direct questions which are asked by uh, people of John Mueller and he stands up and uh, gives an answer and um, I, I really don't know um, where any of them have been wrong. They are, it, it's always amazed with me that uh, he's never ever uh, contradicted himself. Whereas Matt Cutts, of course, uh, and of course, to be fair to Matt Cutts, um, a lot of his um, answers are over uh, an extended period of time and, and things change. Um, so, um, you know, in, in I, there, there's an instance uh, this might have been in Jenny's article, or am I remembering it from somewhere else, uh, where um, um, Matt Cutts um, was saying it's, it's okay to have um, exact match um, links um, in, a, in a, um, a press release or something. And then, oh, I can't remember, actually. But yeah, but it is important to look at the context. Um, I've been tricked a couple of times <laughs> where I didn't read the context first. Um, yeah. And if you go back and read, the, 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 look at the, uh, the, the context uh, of the Hangout, for example, um, it, it's just not true what some people say about uh, what Google said, right? <laughs> And really, I mean, do we really care what Google said? Um, I mean, no, well, no, they, no, they have they have that uh, search engine, Jim. Uh, it's <laughs> <sighs> yeah, they they have a fair uh, bearing on our um, our professional lives, do they not? Oh. Yeah, well, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I seem to do all right with, with, with my philosophy of FU Google. <laughs> I, I thought it was FU Apple with you. <laughs> no, no, no. An exclusive theme. <laughs> well, I've got something to say to you. Here, here we have it. Um, hang on, where, where else are we here? Is that going to come up? Peace. <laughs> Is that a heart with peace in it? Yeah, yeah. I, think so. I, I put my hippie head on. All right, and we covered Jenny's article? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this is the one we referred to um, earlier um, tonight. Oh, Mikey, you're heading off um, on... on on the train to work? Yep. Safe journey, mate. Right, yeah. mate. We'll see you Monday. Yeah, I'll see you guys Monday. I'll send yep. out a suggestions for places shortly once I check at uh, when I get to work. So. No worries. Okay, so um, um, Tim Kapper is flying uh, to the UK, sorry, to the US on um, Saturday. Uh, Micah is flying on. Uh, sorry, no, Micah's not flying. He's already there. <laughs> Matt, Matt is flying happening. on Sunday. <laughs> they probably won't let you in the country, Tim, with you with your um, 
known association with Vladimir Putin. <laughs> you, you'll be well, on the no fly list, He's going to be Jim Cap of the flip flop bomber. <laughs> Just just okay. don't have too many shandies on the flight. Yeah. They're gonna detain me because I didn't put south or north in my home address. <laughs> Alright guys. I'll see ya. See ya. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya, see ya man. But then they keep a record of KGB agents, they think. Oh, fucking hell, Jim. I'll tell you what, if I am detained by immigration... <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming after you. <laughs> no. No, it's... You know, we won't see... Tell them that, that they can bring me if they talk... If they call me and ask me about Tim Capital, I'll say, oh, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, next thing you know, I'll be sitting in Guantanamo and I'll be the only one in there. <laughs> I'll be there for the next 14 years. Yeah, doing that water um, thing. Yeah, you mean surfing? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. A anybody with a comment on on deprecating our Ajax crawling scheme and announcement um, from Google? Okay. Let's go to the next. Oh, swear the thank you for watching today. It's the end. Um, Look, um, for, for those of you still watching us, thank you. Um, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. We appreciate it. And um, um, we, we'd like you to join us. Um, if you would, um, we'll put um, a link uh, to this Hangout uh, in the SEO Questions community on Google Plus in the first post. And um, yeah, we, we'd like you to come along and have a chat in the green room afterwards. Um, and um, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this. Uh